Hello. I want to say I'm honored to be receiving this award named after this giant, right, Bayard Rustin. Um, but I also have to admit when I received the email, I, I had that feeling and I have that feeling that you get when you receive an award named after a giant. Um, and so for me, receiving this award also calls to mind the words of Ruth Foreman, when she was honoring um, the passing of another giant, June Jordan, um, and just the work that we try to do here at, at, at WSU. So I think it's apt. I want to share a couple of those words, um, if I may. Foreman wrote, You took the time to teach us. Open your mouth. Change this place. And so we do. Because we remember you daily cared enough to break your heart and genius open. Give a piece. And even though our song's not so fierce or fire, we carry notes you taught. And in that beauty burns a flame that does not die. I want to give a shout out to the officers of Quia, Queer Intersections doing difficult work on our campus in this really challenging time. Valerie Bracamontes, uh, Kai Wong, Samantha King Shaw. Also to the students of Camaradas, the graduate student, Chicanx Latinx uh, organization, especially Veronica Sandoval, who's been chairing since she arrived at this campus, hit the ground running, and continues to do the good work even as she wraps up her dissertation. So it's an honor to work with you all. It's an honor to be receiving this award named after this fierce, black, queer, socialist, good man. And I look forward to working with you all as, as we strive to move WSU forward, move the nation forward move our communities, our world forward to a more just space. Thank you. Hello, my name is Crystal Roig Palmer and I'm truly honored to be a recipient of the inaugural Bayard Rustin Excellence Award I owe this award though to the thousands of individuals that I've encountered and walked alongside and learned so many things from throughout the entire course of my career of almost two decades working in the field of criminal justice. Most of my efforts throughout my career have focused on youth prevention. And so I'm sharing this to say that essentially my career has afforded me the opportunity to identify a very critical social problem and that is that when it comes to youth prevention, our society has truly missed the mark in ensuring that LGBTQ plus youth and young adults have safe spaces to gain social service provisions and community at. So what this means is that they have a very limited accessibility toward having positive youth developmental experiences, which they're very deserving for. So how does this relate to Bayard Rustin and his career of activism in pursuit of social justice for civil rights across humanity? Well, when I think about Bayard Rustin and his work, there are so many things that we could celebrate and discuss with each other and how successful he was in his efforts across his career. But one thing in particular comes to mind in terms of really hitting home for me on what I've always tried to pursue in my career and really encompass every step of the way. Um, that I've taken in youth prevention. And when I think of Bayard Rustin's work, no matter what avenue of social justice he was pursuing, it was grounded in this concept of the oneness of the human family. And what this means is that 
no matter our distinguished characteristics across all of humanity, it is important to recognize that we are still one human family. It is important to recognize that we are responsible and should be held accountable to lift one another up, no matter the difficult circumstance, no matter the tribulation, no matter the time. And with that being said, across my career, when I think back over all the years, I have encountered so many social institutions and people that work within those social institutions, whether we're talking about a school, a place of worship, a youth recreational facility, um, a homeless shelter, you name it, the list goes on and on. But I have seen in these institutions that the LGBTQ plus youth and young adult population were practically treated invisible, and this is absolutely unacceptable. I was not seeing that concept of the oneness of the human family put into practice in working with these youth and young adults. So years ago, I contacted an organization, which is Lambert House. It's a LGBTQ plus community resource center located in Seattle, Washington. And with respect to the pandemic, it is still successfully operating on a virtual platform today. This organization, in my eyes, years ago, when I first met with uh, the executive director and program manager, I saw immediately that it was a safe space that was providing what I was not seeing in the social institutions, which was a place for these youth and young adults to just be and to have community at, to have a community to depend upon, to learn from, and most importantly, a community to grow with. So I would like to say thank you. Uh, I owe Lambert House and its family that I'm now a part of volumes of gratitude for allowing me to do the research and the work that I was able to accomplish with you all in essentially amplifying the voices of the LGBTQ plus youth and young adults because let me tell you, it's time that their voices are heard and we need more centers like Lambert House. So thank you again for this award. I accept it on very humble terms. Take care everyone and be safe.